and welcome back to my channel. I'm Patty. I go by Patty Mac Makes everywhere online. In today's video, you can see we're sitting in my sewing room. We're at my sewing table. I've got the machine out and uh, I'm doing a few uh, quilting swatches to get ready for some really fun projects I have planned. But before I sew any of those projects, I want to make sure that my ideas are going to work. And so I'm sewing swatches. And part of the uh, swatching that I'm doing involves playing with my new sewing machine and the walking foot that came with the sewing machine. A lot of people can get really flipped out <laughs> when you start talking about using a walking foot and your sewing. And I'm here to tell you, it's not a big deal. Honestly, it's no big deal. I'm going to show you how to set it up, how it works and what it can do. And I'm over here just having a really good old time uh, sewing little uh, serpentine stitches onto my swatch. I want you to see on the back side that uh, the stitches are like, they're going everywhere. So all I've done is set up the serpentine stitch and uh, I'm just going wherever I feel like, <laughs> which is really fun because if you've done any quilting at all, you'll know it's incredibly exacting it's so exacting and uh, when you do this you can just have fun and enjoy it and you know I'm all for that so uh, you can do that as well as follow your straight lines which I've done here with my stitch in the ditch and so here what I've done is I've just followed the stitch line on the little uh, strips that I cut this is a swatch, so my fusible batting didn't line up perfectly. I'm just using scraps for my swatch. It's no big deal. But you can see how nice and straight all of the lines are. And that was my stitch in the ditch version. So I'm just kind of playing and having fun. And I thought I would show you how uh, you also can enjoy using a walking foot. So the question is, what does this thing do? Why do I care about it? Why do I need it? What the walking foot does is it gives you a second set of feed dogs. So on your sewing machine, on the bottom and the throat plate, you've got those little sharp grippy things. That is a technical term. The sharp grippy things, uh, what they do is they come up, they grab the fabric, they pull it through. So they're always doing like this type of motion, pulling the fabric to the back of the sewing. And the feed dogs will pull the fabric. That is their job. That's what you need to let them do. You never want to push or pull fabric through the machine. If your fabric is not advancing, then either something is bunched up or something is wrong with your feed dogs. Uh, so just don't ever push or pull. You will mess up the timing on your machine. And that is a bad thing. When we start working with slippery fabrics or uh, something that is uh, multiple layers like a quilt sandwich, uh, now we've got all of these um, layers of fabrics and they can start to shift and move around. And when you introduce the walking foot, you have feed dogs on the top of the fabric. So what you have is two sets of these feet running your uh, material through your sewing machine. And so that keeps everything together, that keeps things from stretching out or from slipping or whatever like that. And so that's why you see them in quilting because it's, you know, it's several thicknesses of fabric. Uh, and when you do the actual quilting work of the quilt, which is at the, you know, kind of at the end, you don't want to make this beautiful quilt top and have it attached to your back and all of the work that goes into getting all of this stuff put together and then wind up with puckers and all of these these things that we don't want in our fabric when we do the quilting and what I want to share with you is that this sample is flannel so what I've done is I have cut uh, like two and a half inch strips kind of like jelly roll strips of the uh, the flannel that I want to use just wanted to see what that would be like to uh, do the jelly roll strips as opposed to just the you know the straight fabric I think it's cute but flannel is notorious for being a royal pain in the rear end to work with because it just stretches out everywhere and especially a printed 
flannel, which is what all of this cheap snuggle fabric stuff at Joann's is. It's all printed flannel. It's really cheap. That's why it's three bucks a yard. Uh, so while you can have a good time with it and you can sew with it, you're just going to want to take your time with working with it. And I am very pleased with the result that I got doing this with the walking foot. Okay, so I'm going to show you how to put the walking foot on your machine and how to use it. And it's not as bad as you think. And um, I think you're going to be really pleased with the results and proud of yourself for doing it. Okay, let's jump in. So here's what we're going to do. We're going to change out this whole apparatus here and put the walking foot on. And this is our walking foot. And this is what the walking foot looks like. I mean, it looks kind of intimidating. You know, it's big. Usually a presser foot is just this little thing like back here. A little foot, literally. And um, this is kind of big and intimidating, but don't let it intimidate you. It's not that big of a deal. It has a couple of things going on. And what we're going to do is we're going to use this bit to attach it to here. Uh, this is going to go onto the shank is what it's called. And... Uh, this little piece here is going to go around the needle bar, which is on the other side over here. And uh, this part goes up and down with the needle, and that's what activates this motion of the presser feet. And, or excuse me, the feed dogs. <laughs> this is the presser foot. So these little guys going back and forth are the feed dogs on the top. And you can see like this is open on the presser foot here and that's so that the feed dogs can get down through and pull the fabric. So uh, okay let's get this guy onto here. Okay so the machine is off the first thing we're going to do is just take the foot off and you just do that by the release bar in the back. You're going to need this crazy looking little piece and this is basically like your uh, screwdriver. If you have a small screwdriver you can use that too. That's actually a little easier. And what we're going to do is we're going to loosen this screw and um, there's no way I can do this without getting my hand in the way. So, And we're just going to loosen it up and this whole little piece comes off and that is like your your presser foot assembly. So don't lose that. You're going to need that. <laughs> now that the presser foot piece is off, let's just go ahead and remove the needle. Okay, now you've got to do kind of two things at once. You've got to get this little piece up and around the needle bar while you're getting this other piece around the, um, the screw. So it's you're trying to do two things at once. Okay, so you're doing two things at once, which is a little bit tricky, but um, you can do it. Okay, so you can see now that uh, this little screw over here is tightened up and so the apparatus is attached now to the shank and over here this little guy is cradling the needle bar so it's kind of uh, two motions at once getting all of this on but you know you can do it <laughs> I have faith in you uh, okay now let's go ahead and put the needle back in place and uh, give it a sew and see how it does the walking foot is installed and uh, you can see that the needle is in the down position and I want you to notice that this little uh, arm is wrapped around this bar. You can see how that's doing there. Let me just raise it up. You can see on this side how that's resting around and so what happens is every time this needle goes up and down because this is on the needle bar Every time this goes up and down, this is going up and down, and what that affects is right here. And these are the upper feed dogs. So you have your upper feed dogs, you have your presser foot, and underneath you have the regular machine feed dogs. So when your walking foot is installed, you are in effect have two sets of feed dogs running, and what this does is it allows your 
your fabric, whatever it is you're sewing, to feed through more carefully. And this is like really important when, not just in quilting, but in several kinds of fabrics. Okay, so let's just take a look at stitching in the ditch with this little sample I've got here. And we'll go ahead and engage the needle down. I'm going to just butt the fabric up to the needle. And we're going to do a uh, stitch in the ditch, which means we're just going to sew along that seam. And, you, and what I want you to do, I want you to watch how this uh, piece is going to go up and down and then the feed dogs are going to help advance. And this will give you a good idea of how this apparatus works. These little feed dogs here help to advance the top of the fabric. And we'll just hand crank it so you can see that a couple of times. So this is going up and the feed dogs are advancing. And that's, that's the whole motion, that's what it's doing. When you get to the end, uh, you're just going to kind of sew off of the fabric. These are not designed to go in reverse, so no back stitching. Okay, and I'm just going to sew my leader, or in this case it would be an ender. Here we are in the side angle. So what I want you to notice is I want you to notice the um, motion of the feed dogs that are right here, and I want you to notice how this uh, little... Um, finger that's around this needle bar, how it goes up and down with um, the needle because it's attached right here. So that's that's the important thing when you're installing this is you want to make sure that your lever, however it is on your particular uh, walking foot, this has to be uh, lined up and attached to this needle bar somehow because that's how the feed dogs work. And uh, you want to make sure that your uh, screw over here, which is how you connect the apparatus to the, um, the housing, you want to make sure that's nice and snug so that you, know, you don't want it to come loose when you're sewing. Okay, so I've got my leader. We'll sew to the end of that. Okay, and I've already sewn uh, two rows of my stitch in the ditch, so let's go ahead and do row three. So you can sew uh, straight stitches with your walking foot. You can also do a little bit of uh, decorative stitching and you can do um, sort of like, um, it's kind of like a free motion, it's not really a free motion, but uh, what I'm going to do is show you on this other sample uh, how to just kind of play with uh, some of the, uh, the Serpent's Teen Stitch and how you can approximate uh, a more of a, a look of a, a free motion quilt. Uh, so it doesn't have to just be straight because you have uh, width in here where the needle goes, which means you can do decorative stitches and your stitches that require any sort of lateral movement like uh, zigzag, any type of zigzag. So uh, you want to make sure that your, um, your walking foot has that uh, width. Even though mine is what they call a closed toe because this is uh, closed in with metal, I just have a narrow uh, opening here to kind of watch where my seams are going. Uh, I can still uh, do decorative and lateral stitching because I have the width in here where I need it. And uh, make sure that your little feet dogs are lined up with the opening here in your uh, presser foot on either side because this is what moves your fabric through the machine as you sew. Okay, so 
I'm set up on what they call the serpentine stitch on my uh, patchwork that is stitch number 63 and uh, yeah so I'm just gonna kind of I'm gonna have a little fun and show you uh, what else you can do so I'm just like going everywhere and I'm just steering get my little ender. Here are two samples side by side and uh, you can see the serpentine lines that are just kind of any which way I wanted to go. <laughs> that was really fun. I think you'll enjoy this type of quilting if you give it a try. Uh, so here's this and then here's this uh, stitch in the ditch and look at how even and beautiful everything is and I'll show you on the back and honestly the thing I want you to see is how beautiful and even all of the stitches are and it's just as even on the back side as on the front and that is a testament to the walking foot because this is flannel and this printed flannel is pretty darn um, challenging to work with. It wants to stretch out and go all over the place. Uh, it's much better if you can stabilize it and so like these pieces are uh, swatch panels that I'm working on for another project. I'll link to that when it's ready for you to see. Uh, so uh, I just wanted to kind of see how this works and how it goes together but uh, you can see that the flannel on the top is beautiful and perfect there's no puckering uh, it's as neat on the stitch in the ditch over here as it is on the serpentine uh, and this one is stitching uh, east and west and this is stitching north and south and they're both just as nice and even so uh, it, it works really well. You want to use a walking foot. That's all there is to it. <laughs> are you like, are you kind of disappointed it wasn't more complicated? I know sometimes we set ourselves up for these things and we think it's going to be such a big, huge, massive deal. And then we go through whatever it is and you're like, oh, well, that wasn't, that wasn't bad at all. That wasn't a big deal. Uh, and I hope that that's how you're going to feel about uh, the walking foot. <laughs> It's really not a big deal, but your sewing will improve so much when you add that into your sewing repertoire. My patchwork came with its own walking foot, but they're very easy to obtain and you should be able to get one for your sewing machine. You do want to make sure that you have one that works with your brand of machine because uh, we have low shank, high shank, all these different shanks. You want to know what you have. I have a low shank um, and some machines require their like own special uh, presser feet. I think Bernina is that way. So, uh, but if you've got a Bernina, then I'm sure that you are already <laughs> perfectly well set up with your own walking foot. But for those of us using uh, singers or who are newer to sewing, uh, make sure that you get the presser foot that is appropriate to your model of machine. Uh, you can probably go to the manufacturer's website and look at them there. Uh, but there are plenty of aftermarket walking feet that will work with sewing machines. So that's it. Just make sure you know, know your shank. <laughs> That's the big thing. Know your shank. Okay, that's the video for today. I really appreciate you being here, and I hope that answers your questions. If you have any other questions, drop them below. I'll do my best to answer them. And um, in the meantime, that's all I have for you in this video, and I'll see you around uh, YouTube. Happy sewing!